Good afternoon, my friends. And be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and turn on notifications so that way you'll know everything about me and I will be with you for your entire lives. So today I'm doing things a little bit differently. Normally I'd be wearing the, the black turtleneck, which is just actually over there in the back. But um, you know what, today I just felt like wearing this. Um, it's the same shirt in my uh, display picture. So uh, you can take a look here. That uh, things are kind of changing. I like to change things up, keep things out of, you know, consistent patterns. You know, just change things up, go with the flow and all that. So today, I'm gonna to be talking a little bit about everyone's favorite uh, music social media site known as SoundCloud. Although I should say X favorite because not many people are utilizing it anymore. People have switched over to more legitimate streaming services such as Spotify and Apple Music. And uh, the one owned by Jay-Z, uh, Tidal, if you use that. Um, so yeah, I want to go into that because I think it's an interesting arc in music history that isn't really discussed that much. It's sort of put on the down low. Like it's, we kind of know what happened with SoundCloud, but no one's really going in depth with it. Or maybe they are, I just haven't really done a lot of YouTube research into it, but it's just something that I have observed. So we can sort of pinpoint, um, you know, the golden age of SoundCloud or the up and coming of SoundCloud, which I would say was around 2012, early 2010s, basically, was when SoundCloud started picking up steam. And it was sort of this website where you can upload music in any format and, you know, share it to the world. And, you know, this was sort of a new realm. Um, uh, MySpace was doing this before, but SoundCloud changed it with this notion of reposting and likes and whatnot, so it sort of turned it into a Twitter, but for music, which, you know, in terms of growth as an artist, you could experience was exponential because of the reposting feature. And because of this, when SoundCloud rose to its golden height around 2014, and it was in that stage until I would say about 2017, 2018, 2017 was definitely when you started to see the decline, even 2016 slightly. But during that peak, you would see, you know, thousands of producers, you know, just growing exponentially in terms of followers, likes, reposts. And it was this whole network of all these producers working with each other. And the thing that I realized about it that was very interesting was that a lot of this fandom that these producers were experiencing this somewhat fame was predominantly from other producers and this was a big mirage that I even realized myself in seeing who was consuming my music who was liking it who was reposting it it was mostly other musicians and this was part of this huge network boom of musicians just liking and sharing and this was kind of an abundant period in terms of that sort of market and sort of consuming this these likes and reposts. And it was an interesting time because, you know, you could be any anybody and you make, you know, a well-produced track. And that was the main thing was that it was very heavily based off of trap beats and how well you could produce it to the point where people were just basically flexing their production skills and showing how many drum fills they could do. It was kind of excessive, but it's sort of like a, a Baroque uh, equivalent in the current scope of music of just a lot of really talented composers just trying to outdo each other. How many notes can we make? How many, how many drum fills can we create? How much soundscaping? How much, you know, it, 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 you look at some of the project files for some of this music and it's just ridiculous about how much shit was being pumped. And I wouldn't say this is a good or bad thing. I think in a lot of cases it's excessive. I don't, I definitely don't fall under the category of, you know, m the more the better. Um, a lot of music that was, that came out during that time was very, its emphasis was placed very much on how much you could create and 
how condensed it could be, right? Like how much you could create in the span of about two minutes because that was pretty much the baseline of length in terms of music at that time in that sort of sphere, so to speak. And that was, um, it, it was cool because I was involved in that and I knew a lot of people who were involved in that and got a lot of, you know, followers and hits from that. But the real problems about that was that because it was so concentrated on producers sharing and liking each other's work, that there wasn't really fans of the music. There was other musicians sort of, you know, admiring other people and sharing in this glory and then, you know, wanting to share with each other and try to grow that way. But then something happened in 2017 which was when reality hit, which is when the scarcity mentality hit, which is what to me was the big illustration of the mirage of what SoundCloud music was, was when SoundCloud released an article or some other news site anyways, the whole point was SoundCloud was saying that they were gonna shut down completely within a period of like six months. And this was just like an ax through the SoundCloud community. For all these people that built their entire careers around SoundCloud and SoundCloud plays, it was like a huge reality hit because now this entire platform that they were completely dependent on all of a sudden showed its weakness that it might not exist. And if that didn't exist, where would all these musicians get all their plays and where would their fans go? Because the reality was it was entirely fixated on SoundCloud. And that was when people started moving into Spotify, you know, more stable, more legitimate streaming services. And SoundCloud started to develop this scarcity mentality. And I'm noticing this with a lot of musicians is this stinginess. And, and like, it's, it's like everyone's become really cheap with how much they like or repost tracks. It's almost become like, it's become very competitive in that world. There's a lot of jealousy. You can just feel it in the SoundCloud scope. Whereas 2015, around the peak, it was sort of just like, it's like no one really gave a shit about what kind of music it was or how good it was or if you were better or worse than them. It was very much like this sharing, this very community-oriented thing. And then all of a sudden, reality hit. Reality hit that there is a chance that all of this could be deleted tomorrow, that you're not making any money off of this to begin with, and your fame is imaginary almost. And this created this whole new paradigm shift in terms of people on SoundCloud, in terms of musicians on SoundCloud, that all of a sudden this wanting to share, wanting to repost, just minimized completely. And it still happens, obviously. It's not gone away, but you can notice that a lot of producers, and including myself, who used to get a lot of more plays two or three years ago, now all of a sudden are getting lower and lower and lower and less people are listening, less people are giving a shit. And this is predominantly because most of those listeners were other producers and now other producers are in a scarcity mentality. They're in a lack mentality, a lack of, I don't have enough plays, I don't have enough likes. And because of that, they might see other people as competitors. Like I don't want them to have as much likes as me or whatever. And so they're more stingy on that realm, regardless of how good the music is or if they genuinely like it or not. There is this vibe going out, just this general scarcity, lack mentality within SoundCloud and music in general, which I find pretty interesting. It sort of happened on Bandcamp as well. Um, but Bandcamp is a little different because it's more geared towards fans of music rather than actual musicians. Although a lot of musicians buy music on Bandcamp, it's a little bit different in that regard. And Spotify is a little bit more difficult to gear as to who's listening to what, because because of SoundCloud, there's sort of a log of people that you can see who listens to your music based on people who like it and people who repost it. On Spotify, it's a little, it's a lot more anonymous. You don't really know who is listening. You just get a general sense, like, oh, show the cities these songs are played in. So 
the entire music industry and standard in terms of getting known has completely changed like back and forth in the last decade because like it went before soundcloud it was like you know the good old-fashioned days get on a label get promotion you know pay some money and then soundcloud sort of changed that where it was you know let's get music out there through the people and through people sharing and reposting and liking and then all of a sudden everyone started competing with each other on that level because now all of a sudden these likes and these reposts were like a scarce resource to have and if someone else has more reposts than you then you're sort of losing the game so to speak which i don't think people are going to admit that up front because you know, this is a very toxic, envious mentality, but it exists within everyone. I don't care who you are, how enlightened you may claim to be, there is envy, there is jealousy in everyone. And this is being exacerbated by after SoundCloud decided or warned us that they were probably going to close down, which they didn't, but it really cut everything down. And now no one really uses SoundCloud that much anymore, and they've switched over to Spotify. So, you know, there's not really much else to go into that topic. I just thought I'd address it because it was something on my mind and something that I wanted to speak about. Um, so overall, that's about it. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day.